a very good morning to you, you craft lot. Today we are crossing over to craft. It's gonna be knitting with beads. I love this because um, you will string your beads. I'll, I'll show you the process just in a second, but you can string all your beads on onto your metallic thread or wire or whatever you like to use. And then you can just sort of curl up on the sofa or knit anywhere. You could like, you know, take it on the train with you and um, take it to the seaside. And um, there is so many different variations you can do. Let me just grab this one. Um, we're going to be, I'm going to be showing how to do this one today um, with the lovely pearls here in the middle and well you could add crystals or form with pearls to either side someone has graciously given us a bundle and i'm just going to show you that in a minute um really really great stuff let me turn you down and then i can show you the materials better and show you the bracelets better as well with obviously the light is hitting that way a little bit better just move a couple of bits around here Right. Um, oh, let me just quickly say hello before I turn. Good morning, Helen, Joe, Nat, Paula, Michelle, Julian, Jan, Francis, Debbie, Diana, Caroline, Karen, Alicia, Carol, Margaret, Lucy, Annie, Judith. Um, oh, my cousin is watching. Good morning, Evie. Um, Alison, Annie, Leslie, Camille, Sandy. There is so many of you lovely ladies here. Right. Let me turn you down quickly turn the camera around right let me show you what's on the website so as you know we have changed of our categories it's the fourth one from the top now facebook tutorials you go in there that's today's one now what we have in there we got a pearl bundle which i'm going to show you in a mi minute this is four by seven millimeter um rice shaped glass pearls they are really great to work with they are really something a little bit different um from your normal i suppose rounds and um what we've been using um up to now they sit a little bit differently and we got lovely gorgeous sort of color blends in there um then again you got um the big eye needle which is gonna make life so much easier we got um the ends of what you're going to be working with i'll show you those ones as well we got bamboo knitting needles double-ended ones and um, they are really great and i'll show you why i have metal ones at home quite a lot of them as well but uh, since i had these bamboo ones i keep using them because they are much kinder on the hand and then all the other bits of pieces now what we're going to be using is this metallic um threads now they're 250 each or you can buy a bundle of six ones for 9.99 and there's about 30 meters on each spool so it's gonna go a long way anyway but with a bundle you save a fiver off of your purchase so that's great as well so let me just pop this to the side so the glass pearls let's just have a look at the glass pearls quickly um usually i have it on a nice on a tray and already put out but this morning just was a little bit well we we're a little bit late getting into work to be honest i have to admit it and then we just had to have a little bit less prep time but hey ho right so i'm just gonna show you so each of the colors has sort of all three different shades in there so that's your reds with your rose and burgundy you got your pinks there a really nice i'm using i pre-strung the purple ones and i'm going to show you on the gray one on the monochrome ones that um how easy is to or how to create your pattern that one is to go with the blues isn't it yes and that one is to go with our pages and then we got the three shades of gray i might have accidentally picked up this one twice but those are your colors they're really nice and they're really nice quality as well and now i just put them out but i'm going to pick them up so i can bring them up sure so because of the shape is this right shape they're going to sit really nicely in our bracelet so i just bring a couple of bracelets in they're going to sit that way and we're going to knit between it so this one is a three bead 
um, knitted bracelet so you need four stitches because you got one on either side and between the beads as well um, really easy to do and actually grows quite quickly as well itself so you don't have to it doesn't take too much time you need to add your beads on first there's a couple of different ends you can use this one is more of the basic end and I'm going to show you how to use this and there's a silver one as well. This comes in three different colors. I'm just trying to find one of the darker ones, but I haven't got any here. This comes in three different colors. You got silver, gold, and gunmetal black. So you can really match your beads up to which color you want. You could also use these double loop clasps, which these clasps we've been using for loads of different bits of pieces. If you do wish to use these clasps, you're gonna start by knitting the, your stitches and you start right onto the loops but this is all we got a pdf today you could download it's all in the pdf as well and there is no right or you know amount of you could you could go as wide as you want like i went with these um crystal beads they are four by six millimeter in um, size and they got one two three four five in a row with six stitches and then i got a smaller ones here I love this purple one. This one's got six beads on there. So when you're doing something like this, you're just adding the beads on exactly first on your string, the same beads all the way along, and it just creates this really nice texture. Now this one has a magnetic clasp, and this one is available as well. Again, you start by stitching on the end to create your first stitch right from the loop there. Just another variation in um, a clear one, clear and silver. Now, if you want to, if you've got loads of odd bits of pieces at home, like odd beads, maybe a few pearls left of a strand and, um, you know, a crystals, anything else left, you, what you actually could do as well, I'm just getting the other two colors I have here, is to mix up all your beads you have. And as you can see, this blue one, is very similar in size so they all sort of four millimeter ish um you've got bicones you've got rounds you've got pearls you've got glass beads you've got all sorts in there this one again is slightly variant so you've got four and maybe five millimeter bicones in here this one is got four to six millimeter beads in there so they do look like you know they, they still look all right and but when i created this one and the blue and the black one with the mixed beads i just picked them up randomly from like a little sort of um heap of beads on my mat but um i'm not very good usually to pick up things randomly because i'm quite methodical so for me to do something totally random is um really an achievement i guess but i just picked the beads up randomly and finally this one is the Miracle Beads one, where I used a small one and a large one, small one, large one, all the way along. Again, a three bead um, row with four stitches, really nice as well. So you could, you know, do any different pattern you want, anything you want. But without further ado, let me, let us start. We're going to do one of these bracelets with the lovely pearls in the middle now because in your bundle you get so many different colors what i thought we could do we could bend, blend the pearls inside there now the crystals we got plenty of bundles for the four millimeter crystals you could use the three by four um rondelles as well but you really want them to sort of the same size as your um pearls so i'm just going to show you how to blend the colors and how to pick them up so let's go with three different shades of the sort of like a monochrome one i think you can is that does that pick up quite well and that color a pre stronger purple one already so we're eliminating with that one but um yeah i think those three show up quite well yes let's let's put the black one right at the end to have a really nice color change in there right so i'm just going to use some crystals four millimeter round crystals i'm going to put this as the metallic thread comes in six different colors i'm going to put this on the 
Hmm, maybe this, this grey colour would be, look really nice with it. I'm going to put it on that one. I added the purple one onto a silver one already. But these are the other colours as well, what you get in the pack. So you get six colours all together. I love those golds and I love these sort of colours as well. They just, they just look really great. Right, we're going to use that one there. Uh, Margaret has said, would never have thought of knitting with beads. Are they comfortable to wear? Yes, they're really comfortable well because, again, you are creating a fabric-like texture. So it's really easy to, you know, they, they, they are quite movable. And, um, yeah, it's a fabric-like texture. Let me pop one of them on for you. They, they can be slightly a little bit stretchy as well. So um, probably maybe, you know, 3%. They can get like a 3% bigger. Just pop this one on for you. Really comfortable to wear as well. I'm just get this bracelet off. My lovely little Hannah bracelet. Really comfortable. Probably for me, I would. this one is a tiny little bit tight. I would have needed a, a row or two extra. But because it's got a natural tiny bit of stretch on it, you can get away with... Um, Sort of, not one size fits all, but um, get away with it. Right, so. Oh, I'm being told to say morning. So morning, everyone. Oh, yes. <laughs> Molly's here, sitting right next to me. Bless her. She's going to do the comments. Right, big eye needle. We've seen it before. The whole of a needle is an eye. I'm going to split it apart, and I'm going to insert my metallic thread just in there. These big eye needles are great because when you're working with anything thicker, they will go through them. Right, let's get a few beads off of these strands. Now, you really, as you, if you think about it, if you knit it or or, or you knit it yourself, um, you know that the way how you're knitting, you're knitting row by row. And if you followed any pattern, there is always sort of a front and a, and a back Part of it so you're gonna knit one row and then you're gonna purl one row here as well so we get to the loops on the same side now picking up the beads when you're picking up your rows and this is why I wanted to show you with these beads that um, you see what's the difference so if I'm just picking up if I just want to make a bracelet where all the beads exactly the same I would be just picking up the same bead all the way along let's just get this out of the shot so let's see if the camera will focus better on what we're doing have a nice clear surface so if you do this one because when you start knitting you go along one row then you come back on the second row then you go along the third row and that's how your beads are used from your strand and um, so if you're using just one size, you can just pick them up all the way along. However, if you wanted to do a multi-row one, you're going to start with row one, and then you're going to come back on row two, and you're going to go along row three, and etc, etc. So I'm going to start by picking up one crystal. Then I'm going to pick up my rice pearl, and I'm going to pick up another crystal. So this is going to be row one well actually this is going to be the last row what we will be doing because you're working back on yourself so that is row one and then i'm going to pull this down i'm going to pick up row two which again a crystal i'm going to use a different color pearl here and another crystal and then you're going to move along to row three so when i'm picking up my beads I usually just have it in front of me and to speed things up I know my pattern is gonna be a pearl to crystal a pearl to crystal all the way along whatever I'm doing different color pearls or you know if you just want to use the same one but first before you start knitting you have to add all your beads on your strand I like to add slightly a few more beads what I would normally need just in case if I need any more because it's tricky to sort of cut the other one and then start I add more beads to it so once you use the up you use the up so it's better to add a few extra beads on there just like that so you have 
like you know I, I usually go on till I use up my crystals if I use like different color pearls or so that's it that's how you would add your pattern on all the way along and depending on how you pick these up now if I wanted to do a five row one with two crystals on either side then I would have to pick up four crystals in the middle and then still would or, or I could have a crystal pearl crystal and um, another pearl another crystal it's really it's up to you have a little play with it um there is nothing you know set in stone you can always i like to make little swatches when i'm working at new beads or i, I do um you know want to play with it work out a pattern i would just add maybe five row worth of beads on my thread and just knit that up and just have a look how would that sit so whatever beads you have at home you can start using them up i think the golden rule is that if you want a nice and even bracelet even if you use multiple size um, beads, the one row is have to be a similar size. Otherwise, it's going to start to pucker or pull and on one side. Right, let me just put these grey ones to the side. Uh, Sophia has said, morning, Key. How many beads will I need for a seven-inch wrist? Um, well, it's depending on how tight you are knitting, depending on what size needle you will be using, and um, depending on the size of the beads as well. So for these ones, my wrist, I think this is just under eight inch, and you would need a string of the crystals, and well, you're not going to, and a string of the pearls, you're not going to, um, because there's a hundred crystals on a strand, let me just count it for you because there's so many on there because this one is quite tight or come apart that's it so this one is i haven't got a ruler here unfortunately Maybe I can ask Molly to go, go and Molly will go and grab a ruler for us so we can measure this exactly. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twenty-two, four, six, eight, thirty-two, four, six, eight, forty, forty-two, forty-two on here. So in that case, you're gonna need two strands of pearls and one strand of the crystals. And Molly just gonna grab a ruler for us so we can measure it. But I think this is might be about seven and a half inch because it was just a little bit tight on my wrist. Right, so let's get started knitting. So I have my purple ones, which I love these purple ones. This is sort of a lavendery colors. I'm already strand on my spool. I'm gonna take the big eye needle off. We don't need that. Now I want to take my crystals down my strand a little bit because gonna start knitting. Omali's just got a ruler for us. Brilliant. So if I measure it in inches, that is seven and a half. If I measure it in centimeters, that will be just maybe 19 centimeters because that closes into the other class. Right, so I'm gonna get my needles. Now needles, we have got different sizes on the website. I like to use sort of three, three and a half millimeter needles. They have one fifty for, for four of them and they are double ended. So they basically just look like uh, a skewer stick, what you would have um, in your kitchen. However, these ones are bamboo and they have got a nice smooth finish to them. They, what I love about them, that they got this natural bend in them. So I'm, can I can, especially if I'm knitting late at night, I can hold my needles quite tight in my hand and because this one bends a little bit i just find that my hands don't hurt from it when i use a metal one and and it's a little bit more rigid when i'm trying to hold on to my knitting um sometimes it can be a little bit my hands will hurt the next day so those are the three mils these are the three and a half mils and let me just open I'm going to open them all up for you. So depending on what size of beads you want to work with, you're going to need a um, different needle. Now, the most, or oh, two mil as well, sorry. 
just opening the packaging. Uh, Carol said, with the pattern work, using just two beads, please. Yep, if you want to do two beads, then you need three stitches. So they are the two mil needles, they're quite tiny. So if you want to work with something really smaller, um, then get the two mil one. And then after the two mil, we got three mil, which is what I probably use the most. And I'm gonna use that today. Then you got three and a half mil and four mil. So if you want to do use larger beads, which um, for example, like this one, um, these are four by six millimeter crystals. I would use four mils. If you just want to use like, you know, four mil beads, then you can get away with like the three mils as well. Right, so you would cast on, cast your stitch on as you would normally. I might have to bring that camera out just a tiny bit so you got a little bit more room to maneuver here. So let me just bring you out just a tiny bit. Natalie said, Kitty, can we have a bead club day for this one? Oh, definitely. But I have to warn you, I do need a little bit different. So I'm originally from Hungary and my mom taught me knitting when I was little. And um, oh, a few years ago, before Christopher, we used to sell yarn as well. We still sell yarn as a little side business. And we were uh, one of the one of the shows and I was knitting and the ladies were saying, oh, you need completely different how I would be knitting. And um, I, I, I didn't really sort of understand it why. And then they showed me how they knit. Um, it's a little bit different. So just knit your normal way. So add your stitches on, how you would add your stitches on when you do your knitting. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna turn around. Now I'm gonna do, you need to do a couple of rows because if I would take an, this end down, you would have maybe a row underneath where this, this little crimp end, and I'll show you one which is open. And this little crimp end would have to grip into. So I just got four stitches on there. Then I'm gonna just go along and do a couple of rows just so I have something from my grip end to grip into. So I'm just gonna do normal. Uh, Diane says, does the bracelet curl in on itself? It does curl in on a little bit when you're not wearing it and it's on the sort of your table or anywhere else. But once you put it on, it it's, it flattens right out. So because you're doing the same stitch on one side, you could do um, knitting all the way through, but you would see. So when you have a knitted pattern, you got a knit side and you got a pearl side. So this is the knit side when the loops come through this way. And if you look at the pearl side, you have got like a tiny little, almost look like a little knot um, on this side. So if you want it, you could do knit one, pearl one all the way along. I just find it a little bit neater um, to have the same stitch all the way on one side and have, so have a pearl side and have a knit side. But um, once you put it on, it's gonna flatten right out. So it's not a problem at all. Right, so we did one row. I think I'm just gonna Come back on myself one more time. So I have a nice little grip end here with my stitches. So, so far it doesn't really matter if I'm knitting on purling because this end is going to be hidden inside our grips. So very quickly got to the end. Right, so I'm gonna start introducing the beads now, turning around. So let's start with a knit row. Take these beads further down a little bit, just giving us a little bit more to work with. I'm gonna bring the first three beads up, what I need. And I'm gonna take my first stitch normally Then I'm gonna pull 
the bead down and take my second stitch just like that then I'm gonna pull the next bead down and take my third stitch pull my third bead down and take my fourth stitch and when I pull this out you can see that the beads are caught between my stitches Just bring it up a little bit to you then I'm gonna turn around and now I on the pearl side so my thread is going to be at the front I'll just trim this end a little bit usually I would add all the beads and I would sit on the sofa and the knitting would be on my lap so it would be sort of easy and I'm getting caught with the other end of the table so I'm going to purl this time so I'm just going to take my first stitch without a bead then I'm gonna pull my first bead down and take my second stitch then I'm gonna pull my third bead down a second bead down and take my third stitch and really really that's easy so if I get going with this like just sort of chilling on the sofa um, I can probably need to brace that up in maybe 10 15 minutes because once you added your bead on there they just quite um they become quite quick and row by row so i'm back to the knitting row now you're gonna add your beads on so the first stitch i'm just gonna take normally with that bead then i'm pulling the first bead down and then pulling the second bead down and pulling third bead down and taking the fourth stitch and just really quickly you can vis up a lovely little bracelet you can make them into chokers I guess but what I love about this that you're really utilizing you're making two you're bringing two different crafts together and um, it's like embroidery as well when you've got sewing and here you got knitting and jewelry making and just keep Adding, I'm really sorry, I'm concentrating on this too much that I, I'm not keeping an eye on the comments, but Molly's here. So if you've got a question, just please pop it up and Molly's gonna read it out for us. Uh, the PDF is now on the website. There were some issues with it, but it's now on there. <laughs> okay, so Simon <laughs> sorted that out. Yeah. Um, Laura so the, has said, oh, where's it going? Your way of knitting looks easier than how I do it. Your knitting into the back of stitch looks better for getting beads in. Um, I'm the, this is the thing because I learned I guess the European way for me it's so unnatural to hold the needle and the, you know your thread or knitting yarn in a different way that um, this is why when he had this discussion with Sarah and she said oh I'll do crocheting and you can do knitting that um, I said fine I do knitting no problem but I do sort of knit a different way I hold the needle the different way that um how people hold it here but then i think I, I can knit quite quick as well so just keep going adding your rows um turning backwards and forwards try to keep a nice and even so i'm gonna bring two rows down so i don't have to let my thread go uh, once you get going you can have more beads sort of just sitting at the top here and you just go backwards and forwards without um, taking the thread off my finger so it becomes quite quick as well I'm just gonna add a couple more rows and I will show you the end so every single time when you turn around start a new row the first stitch is just without beads then you're gonna pull a bead down and do your second stitch just after that bead capturing that bead between stitch number one and number two and you're gonna keep carry on capturing your beads you can make your bracelet as wide as you can as you want um, 
over anything. You could create lo loads of sort of different structures and textures with it. Um, it doesn't just have to be jewelry. Um, think about home decor as well that you could do, you know, decorating um, different things. I mean, how lovely would it be to do like a cover for a notebook? Or loads of different things. And um, I didn't bring in, you know, I um, take a picture of it. I did do a knitted... Um, handbag which is not quite ready molly do you know where it is i think it's in the office in one of the boxes uh, I can go, check go, go and have a look it's just like a big knitted up with seed beads and um okay. molly's gonna have a look <laughs> um i meant to pick it up the, uh, this morning so i can show it to you so you could even knit like i got a knitted purse at home and i got sort of a half done one here but with the same technique you could take it further and further and further and do larger pieces as well so let me just do show you again. So if you just joined us, we are knitting with beads and it's ever so easy. You just do your normal stitches. You're gonna, the first stitch, you're just gonna do without a bead. Before you do the second stitch, you're gonna pull a bead down. Then knit your second stitch. Then you're gonna pull another bead down I mean, you could have two stitches between a bead um, or three stitches, so how many stitches you want. It doesn't just have to be one stitch. I just like to do one stitch because you just keep it nice and even. And then you just turn around and start knitting on the other side. It comes together quite quickly. And as you can see, I use the different color purples. I don't know if the camera picks it up. Um, I got sort of a lot slightly um, the shades going on here. So a darker to lighter, the lightest, um, a medium darker, medium light sort of going on in a bracelet. So you could create all sorts of different patterns, um, different colors going along. The knitting needles are 150 a pack, there is four in a pack, so it will last you a long time. And I do swear by these bamboo needles because they just got that little bit of movement in them. They're a little bit softer than the metal ones, really nice to work with. Um, I have had um, wooden ones before as well. And the problem with the wooden ones, once they try out a little bit, it. no, Molly can't <laughs> find it. Once the needles dry out a little bit, they can be snappy but with the bamboo one the more you hold them the more you work with them the more smoother they become i just think it's such a lovely material and um i have all sorts of knitting needles in bamboo small and large ones and i really do i love them since i had them i haven't really used the metal one as i have inherited a a large um almost like a shopping bag full of needles um from my husband's auntie a few years ago, but they're just sitting in the cupboard. Um, we've got quite a few. So you said, is the thread colour fast? Um, yes, um, it's a really good, uh, it's a metallic thread. Um, the colour can come off a little bit, but um, that's like, you know, if you have really sweaty hands, I guess, or, or like, you know, if you would, it's just like with normal jewelry, you want to keep you away from water. So if you're washing up or you're doing anything like that, you want to take it off. Um, I never really had any problem with it, um, with the color on there as well. But I think it's just really nice. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. So you couldn't really do it on a super long thread because it would be too thin. Um, you want something a little bit thicker. But then again, like if you want to use a rat tail, it would be too thick as well. So just... I guess this is just right in size to use. But you could use anything, any sort of material, as long as your beads got large enough holes on there so they will go through um, and can get on there. You can use any medium you have. I just love this metallic thread because it's the shine you get, sort of you catch between the beads on them. They just looks like a little bit more special, I guess. Uh, Francis, do you have to do one knit row and then one pearl? Can you not just do it all in knit? You can do all knit, but if you're going to do all knit, you're going to see a nice stitch on one side. And in fact, I can always take it back. So let's do an, a 
couple two or three knit rows and then I, you can see what happens so if you purl one row and knit one row you get a nice even finish on one side if then if you start knitting every single row it's still gonna be look all right come on you know to bead slide oh have I missed the bead Oh, yeah, my God. Oh, yes. Sorry. I'm chatting away and I wasn't really <laughs> watching what I was doing. So let's just take back a couple of um, beads here. Because as you can see, I missed the bead in the middle. Right. Pull this down. Come down. Then you come. That's it. And pull it through. Yes, now we are in the right place. Naughty bead jumped around. Well, actually, I need a little bit more length on this so I have more thread. So the good way is that because I pre-threaded my needle on here, um, pre-threaded my beads on here with my big eye needle, I can always take them further down when I need to to give me more material to work with. So let me just. So this is going to be the second row we're going to be just knitting and you can see what happens with the little stitches between our beads how they're going to be different natalie's asked kitty will you teach me to knit please oh yes i will lovely that is one of our local ladies she's from Corchester, and when on normal times we have um bead clubs workshops all sorts happening at our warehouse but um at the moment there's nothing on right so i just knitted three rows straight and let's have a look at the stitching so because it this one this row is knitted and the top row is knitted and as you can see this one should have been a pearl though but it's a knit row so if i turn if I turn it that way, can you see that just sits a slightly above the other row? Just pull it nice and straight. Can you see that that um it sort of a little bit sits on the top of it? So this is nice and straight. Every bead is in a nice and straight row. And when you get here, if you just do knitting and you don't do the purling row, this one will sit um slightly above the the rows before and after and also if you look at your stitches if you knit knit and purl when you got this lovely sort of stitching going all the way up and when you get here when we didn't do our purl and we did a knit row instead you can see you got the lovely stitches before and then you got this like a little knot between there and then you got your stitching again and if you continue keep doing that um i'm i um, I'm really sorry you can't oh maybe you can just catch it there that um, you can see that row is gonna sit a little bit further so you can do obviously you can knit every single row if that's easier for you um, but if you knit one pro one you just get a nicer and neater finish and that's it really you're gonna continue carry on all the way up um, to add your beads I'm gonna have to come back and get these beads off because it's going to be um i want a nice and even finish so i need to get the row before out uh, margaret said i'm fascinated by the way you knit kitty can you show us in slow motion please okay no worries let me just get back on this row Because this one, the one which we knitted and we should have been a pearl row. Oh, and Francis said, yeah, I see that. Thank you for showing. No, that's fine. It's that this is why I'm here for. And this is why we're good that we're doing these Facebook lives. Because you can see exactly what I'm doing, where I'm picking up the beads or where I am, you know, I'm going to have to. There's also a lot of people saying that if they were in this warehouse, they'd try and hide so they could stay. Ah. <laughs> oh. Well, when we when um 
we had the mezzanine floor put in and we took this spare house on um i said to simon well if you added a shower because we've got a kitchen downstairs um obviously for the stuff but and for our use as well but uh, i said to simon well if you added a shower in we could have a bedroom upstairs and we don't want to have to go home we could just stay here right so i am on my knit row so the way how um you would knit you would hold the needles in a different way you would go in from this angle you would wrap your um thread around and then you would pull it through right so the way how i knit i suspend the thread on my finger sorry wobbling camera and um, i just Put it all on my index finger now this acts so this because i can release this as i go along and this um and you do need to keep a tight tension with this thread this finger actually can move up and down to keep a really nice and tight tension so by holding it this way so if you are left-handed obviously you would hold it completely the opposite way um i am right-handed um, well, sort of right-handed. I guess I've got two left hands, but um, I'm holding my work where I'm taking my stitch off with my right hand and holding it between um, my thumb and my middle finger. My yarn, or in this case, the thread is wound onto my index finger. So I got a really nice and tight sort of hold on to this side of my work. And then with my left hand, well, with my right hand, sorry, this is my left hand. So this is something I got two left hand because I'm saying this is left and right and I confuse myself already. I'm really sorry. So this is my left hand. I would her hold my work in my left hand. Oh God, um, it's funny though, isn't it? I'm only just laughing at me because I really, I mess my left and right up and see I told you that I mess my left and right up and you probably didn't believe me so holding the work in my left hand round the thread on my left index finger holding my needle and the end of my work with my thumb and my middle finger free hand is the right hand holding just the needle and then I this one my left hand is quite still with my right hand obviously I need to pull a bit down here with my right hand, I'm just gonna go into the back of that stitch and just hook around. And as you can see, I can move my index finger here to direct that thread or that yarn where I want it to go. And very easily and very quickly, I can keep a really nice and even tension. I'm um, obviously a little bit on the tighter side but I can keep a really nice and easy tension um, throughout my beading. So let's do the purl side. So when I'm doing the purl side, I'm again holding everything exactly the same way. i holding um, the thread is wound up on my finger. I got my beads suspended here, what I'm going to be using, holding on to with my thumb and middle finger and you know, my ring finger and my little finger is just behind as well. I'm holding on to my work. And this time I'm going to come in front of the stitch and pull it through, hook it through, I guess. That's sort of a better description. And then let's this part go. Let's take a few of those beads up. And then I'm going to pull a bead down. And again, I'm going in the front of the stitch and just hook it through. And pull it up and as you can see i just released more thread for my index finger so the motion what you're doing becomes quicker and quicker and then you can knit faster and faster and then i'm just turning around i still got the thread on my index finger i didn't let this go i'm turning around i'm going into the back of the stitch now pulling it through then pulling a bead down into the back of next stitch, hooking it through. I just released a little bit more thread there. And that's it, you are away and you can knit really fast. 
and you get a lovely result with that as well so that's it that's how really easy it is to do this i'm just going to show you how to deal with the end so when you get to knit it up your the bracelet size you want to have um you got this little end to deal with so what i do is add this onto my big eye needle and i just like to before i cut the end off i just like to knot like do a half hitch knot or a couple of half hitch knot on the end just to double secure it to make sure this is definitely not going to come apart and i'm just going to go along and add another one so to do a half hitch knot as your end of thread is coming out there i'm just going to catch any thread a little bit further down pull it through you can see this um, little loop is forming and go to that loop before it disappears and that forms a lovely little knot on there and then i'm just gonna cut and trim this no you can knit with elastic that's that you could try that as well um probably flat elastic would be better than round elastic because round elastic is more stiffer flat elastic is a softer material there is also um elastic which has got like a thread woven around it they quite good to try out as well so to add your end on you're gonna take these lovely little crimps and just don't want to lose the end of those stitches but they're probably going to go anyway um you're going to put it over the end and then you're going to push it together just going to get a pair of pliers make sure this is your beads are nice and straight i'm going to get a pair of pliers put this end over it and just press down closing those ends in Press down on one side and then press down on the other side, a little bit in the middle as well. And then you've got a really nice and tight connection there. Um, you want to get as much as you can this end here inside this crimp and just close it all down. And the thread will be caught inside there and you've got a really nice and strong connection. And from this, I haven't got any, I didn't bring any clasp in. You just would add you a um, lobster clasp with a couple of jump rings or, you know, any clasp you want to add in here. This has become a, because it's got this little loop at the end, um, just becomes a little lovely connectable component, um, nice and neat finish on the end of your knitting. If you wanted to use the two loop clasp, you need to do this at the beginning. Molly, did, did you print the pages out? I just want to show you the instructions as well. Uh, Would you grab it? I think yeah. it's next door. So if you want to do um, the work for something which has got loops on, so either that clasp or this one has got multiple loops on as well, you, I'm going to show you how to add them onto your needle because this is the only other thing what um you could where did i put that it is actually because this one is three let's go something we just got i'm going to add it on a two loop clasp so we're going to do the same pattern with four stitches but i'm going to add it on a two loop scarf but i just want to show you the instructions this one i did as a picture of the instructions um just to show you better um, what's going on that's the pdf so it shows you again how to pick up two different bits of pieces so if you want to you could um get that on the website right i'm going to go into the first loop and i'm just going to not this one on there just like that just to have a little bit of knot so I got a nice and, and a tight finish just with a little knot there then I'm going to take my needle which let's get these out of the way a little bit I'm going to take my needle I'm going to put it right next to my clasp, um, my knitting needle, right next to my clasp, taking my big eye needle, and I'm just going to loop around 
this knitting needle a couple of times from each one of the loops, creating my connection to it straight away. That's three and that's number four. Now this is why I'll come through. I think I've only did I go three. Where is my tail? So this is why it's so handy when you have um, a double-ended needle like this one, because obviously <clears throat> we stitched we added our stitches on there looped them around the loops and i'm just gonna come at the end here go through the last loop and just do a half hitch knot so it's secured on there just like that so i've got a nice and tight finish now this is what is good about your um double-ended needles because this time you wouldn't need to start to knit from here but this is our end so we can't knit from here and basically what you just do you pull your needle through to the other side you turn your work around and you are ready to start knitting on this end so let me just pull some of these down some of these beads down because we added the loops on there, they're nice and secure and they, uh, you know, all you want to do, straighten these up. All you want to do, you're gonna start adding your beads straight away from the first row here. So I'm gonna knit the first one. Am I missing a bead? I'm missing the last crystal, aren't I? Oh dear. I well, just imagined we're just going to cheat a little bit. I will take it back out of the video. And I haven't got enough beads on here anyway. So just ignore that little bit at the bottom, what I got there. Just take your first stitch. I'm going to... Ignore these two. I'm going to straight go in and adding the pearls and crystals right in the first row i just really want to show you the how nicely it's just gonna sit there come on you naughty bead it looks like everyone will be having to sort out of their beading area soon because they're all it was saying it's messy, but it's an organized mess. <laughs> so I tidied up, or when was Sarah down um, about three weeks ago, I really tidied up my home office at home because we were sort of working from the warehouse and we were working from home as well. And um, I am, to my utterly surprise, I managed to keep it tidy for the last three weeks. So I think ignore these ones at the end because they shouldn't be there. So as you can see, I've be added the loops straight onto our class and we're just gonna go backwards and forwards and adding your beads from the straight. Let's just add the three there. So I haven't got any more naughty beads in the way. Um, you're just gonna go backwards and forwards, knitting your pattern straight, um, if you're using like a two loop clasp or something different because you don't need um, a row without beads at the bottom where you would um, hook your end clasp in. So I'm just going to do this one, a second row for you, just to show you how nice and easy is this, this, this one as well. So again, I would knit row, knit one row and then purl one row all the way along. Crystal, where are you? There are you. Pulling the beads down as you need them. Right, and that's it. Ignore these two naughty ones here because they shouldn't be there. Um, I should have finished with a crystal at the end, but um, I, I didn't check and I had a, a pearl bead at the end, but you would go along again, adding your beads 
adding it's row by row adding your pattern on there really easy to do probably if you want if you just a bit um this is the first time you're trying try to do it with all the same size beads it just sort of makes a life a little bit easier because you don't need to think about patterns when you're adding them onto your metallic thread um, prior to starting so try try it with just sort of normal one size beads it could be anything it could be crystals it could be round beads could be glass pearls or even could be a mixture of glass beads because then it doesn't really matter how you you know pick them up or how you add them on and then once you get a little bit confident with it then you can do patterns i love this one is large small large small large small all the way through um or the one, these ones with the glass pearls. I think the glass pearls in the middle, because they're this lovely large shape, they just make you um, a lovely little pattern, like a, a something a little bit different. And in the bundle, you get 21 colors, Molly, isn't it? Yeah, so in the bundle, you get 21 colors. And I chose these colors in the factory shop last year because I wanted to do little sort of ombre section of things. So you always, you got three, different colors of the blue in there where's my lightest blue on. oh there it is just hiding so the three different shades of the blue you will have three different shades of the pink you will have three different shades of the red well, i think one of them are gone um you have three different shades of the grays and black um the aqua as well you got three different shades and there is a third one so you can have really nice effects with this bundle and usually it's 26.50 and today is down to 16.99 is it molly yeah, 16.99 16.99 so that's it for me today um do you have a go if you've got any problems do let me know um me and sarah was thinking the other day that we're gonna be doing um once a week we want to do sort of a bead surgery um facebook live sort of questions and answers um i know one of the ladies days she just texted in um on facebook yesterday and asking us asking me that, like she's been doing the double row flat spiral really enjoyed um doing it i added one side to it already but um not quite sure how to continue to the other side so what we this what we are thinking with server to do that we once a week we're going to do sort of a uh, i got all sorts of beads at home in my office so was sarah i think we got cupboards full of everything so any questions you that ask live or any questions if you um text or email us before then i got time to get it prepped um it's just sort of an extra video where you can just pop on and ask about anything so if you got a question about um like metallic threads or if you got a question about elastic you got a question about um, a particular technique or if you're stuck on how to add a clasp on something or or anything like that um if you got a question we be there and we answer it so it won't be a sort of a product led by it will be led by you what you want us to talk about it but this is with knitting with beads of us today i hope you enjoyed it um do have a go if you have a go please um pop a picture into one of our our groups i love to see what you make um again please share the video or really we are really grateful if you share the video because we just want to inspire as many people as we can i think me and sarah is pro both of like the proud mummy moment actually let's put this bracelet on because it's nice and magnetic and easy to put it on otherwise i'm just going to keep it in my hand and i'm going to keep playing and playing and playing with it so really nice and comfortable to wear as well um proud mummy moment seeing sort of people um inspiring them and then what they can make and um, that's it for me so to tomorrow it's going to be me um we are supposed to do i swapped the um, just the, the, the regal jewelry the rings um we tuesday and and we were supposed to do the magnetic uh, hematite tomorrow and i had to swap it because i couldn't find the samples um i still can't find them and i looked everywhere for it at home as well tomorrow so i might have to change tomorrow's because or, or I, I might just like sit this afternoon and make some new samples up um I don't know i don't know what happened i know i had it two weeks ago when i set it into my diary i put it to the side and i put it in and i thought oh no i must put this somewhere very safe so i i know i need it in a couple of weeks and i put it somewhere very very safe that um 
basically I can't find it anywhere. So are we going to be hunting for that this afternoon again with Molly and see if we can come up with it or, or we might um, sort of have to unfortunately change tomorrow. But um, I will come up with something good one, don't worry. So that's it for me today. If you've got any questions, uh, do message us. Um, I can get back to you uh, pretty quickly. So if you've got any problems, do let me know if you would like us to do this question and answer Facebook Live once a week. So you can, if you're stuck on anything, um, we can show you that particular step of what you're stuck on in a particular project or if you just want to know how to do peyote stitch or if you want to know how to i don't know straighten your wire or anything at all any techniques um but for me and sarah i think um some stuff she knows more i guess so that it would have have to be a question for her but um um i hate the safe place geraldine is saying yes i know i don't know i i, I just uh, I don't know. I don't know where I put it. I put it. I put it somewhere really, really safe. And I went to my bags. I went to my cupboard at home. I looked everywhere in the warehouse. But we did have a, a tidy up sort of um, last week and the week before. And um, things got moved around. So I'm hoping they turn up somewhere because I had rings and I had a whole bracelet as well made up. So I'm really hoping they will turn up very soon. I don't want to just have to make a couple of rings up tonight. It's not a problem, I guess. So that's it for me today. Do you have a lovely day? Um, I'll be with you tomorrow. Um, it will be from the warehouse again. So I'm here today and tomorrow having the weekend off. And um, yeah, keep on beating. Share the video. Share the inspiration. Um, um, please post some pictures of what you're making. Ask Christopher, he might have them. Yes, that's a really good idea, actually, Doris, because I didn't ask him. And he, the little little angel, let's call him little angel, does like to take things from my, well, whatever I do, beading or anything else, and hide it somewhere else. I mean, he doesn't really do it that much now. He's nine, but when he was little, he used to just come and... Like, I, I remember I was doing very berry. He was probably about five years old. And I had this um, bead mat on a tray in front of me. And I was making up these little beaded beads. They were only like 10, 10 making three millimeter in size, the little beads. And the bead you made up was about 12, 12, 30 millimeter in size. And they were like little berries, really. They looked really, really good. And um, I kept making these beads up. And like i didn't understand where the beads gone because i made like a few up and then i came back and there was only like three or four there but the little magpie yes the little magpie was taking always one bead at a time so i didn't actually realize that um there was one missing straight away and i made i must have made about 30 of them up and i still only had 20 um on my mat and i didn't i didn't know where they gone and it's not until about a year later we were clear on get his bedroom and i opened his he's got this little pirate um chest like treasure chest and i opened this treasure chest and there were the beads inside so the little magpie took the beads took it upstairs into his bedroom into his treasure chest because um he really liked them but um never mind um bless him but he did make the beaded bead in a really big beads as well for himself because he was just fascinated about it and we made it together actually a couple of years ago i think we did have a facebook live on it as well um bless him with him right that's it for me today i must go um oh gosh we've been here for over an hour um i need to go and get have some breakfast i haven't had anything to eat yet have a lovely day everybody whatever you do keep on beading keep on crafting and i will see you tomorrow bye